Friends, this week's Torah portion, Kite Tzei, in case you didn't know, contains the source of more mitzvahs than any other in the entire Torah, 72 out of the 613 this week alone. And among the six dozen mitzvot are a number having to do with the responsibility of a person to return a lost object in the public domain. It says over and over again, Hashev Teshivem La'achicha, return it to your brother, whether it's an animal whose livelihood somehow depends on it, or a shirt someone needs for clothing. Judaism deals extensively with the subject of the responsibility of each of us to return lost articles. And for 2,000 years, every commentator has added thoughts on the return of physical things as important as they may be. Well, in the 13th century, it was suggested in the Sefer HaChinuch that the very fabric of a community is tested when a lost article is found. There has to be trust among people for the world to function and knowing that something lost will be returned and not kept by the finder is an example of that very basic sense of trust. But tonight we're gonna to discover that it goes even deeper than that spiritually for Jews. What if the lost article is Judaism itself? What if Jews don't go to the same old clubs or meetings or associations that their parents went to? What if Jews don't affiliate like they used to? Even if they belong to congregations, what if Jews don't participate like they used to? How do we restore this lost gift of Judaism? The answer is finding the right rabbis and other Jewish professionals to connect Jews to Judaism right now and right here. The answer is finding rabbis and Jewish professionals like Adam Grossman. I've been told that my strength is also a weakness by lay leaders, not Nancy, but others. I, I see the good in all the rabbis, cantors, and educators, all the students coming out of the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. Rabbis are overwhelmingly lovely people. But that doesn't mean they're effective. Three W's, whether it's a rabbi, cantor, or other Jewish educator, ideally you need to possess. The first W, is a willingness, W, a willingness to serve. <laughs> Rabbi Grossman is so willing to do anything. When you get home or after Shabbat, click on the 40-second promo video on our website for next month's Shabbat campout to give you a sneak preview of his willingness. He's filmed building a fort under his desk in his office, complete with a sleeping bag and marshmallows on a stick. The second W is work ethic, and boy does he have it. But there are many rabbis who love and would love to work here and who work hard, but they don't have the third W. I call the third W the want factor. Congregants who want him or her in times of joy and sorrow, youth who want him as a connector to Judaism and things Jewish. I know many of you belong to this congregation for over 50 years and even in the last 20 years, filling Jewish professional positions used to be, even when I got out of school, about filling slots with people who were willing to serve and hopefully willing to work hard. That's no longer the case. Reaching in and reaching out effectively is the key. And that's why past presidents Billy Orgel and Arnold Pearl and our president-elect at the time, uh, Nancy, interviewed. Billy and Arnold went with me to LA to interview 11 candidates. And they said, he's the one who will connect best. And they were right. 
my faculty friends said, stay with Adam, mentor him, learn with him, and he'll be a fine rabbi. And they were right. Why is it so important to not only work hard, but be successful with inreach and outreach at this temple? For two reasons. The volume of Jews we serve, more than half this Jewish community. When I was gone, you had two rabbis in a cantor serving 60% of the affiliated community and seven rabbis and two cantors serving the other 40%. So that's the first reason. But equally important is Jewish participation and engagement is no longer a given. It no longer depends on titles. It depends on leadership. Adam, as Nancy said, is a student not only of Judaism but of social media. He gave a talk last week to nonprofits about the dragonfly effect. It's a model to help people achieve a single concrete goal. The dragonfly is the only insect that can move swiftly in any direction when its four wings are moving in harmony. Butterflies, on the other hand, flap their wings and fly, but dragonflies have 20 times more power in each flap of their wings because they do four things with each wing. Focus, grab, attention, engage, and take action. That's Rabbi Adam Grossman. He is our dragonfly. He knows that if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, harness the Jewish people within your reach, and you'll go much, much farther. Grab their attention. Engage them. Take action. Adam asked me to keep it short, so I will. I'm going to close this weekend, uh, this week's illustration of Adam's three W's um, with just this past week. Could take any week. Labor Day weekend, like every holiday weekend, like every weekend here, is a major weekend. Couples call. They want to get married. God forbid someone passes away. New parents do the same for babies born, want baby names. Nothing makes me happier, as our clergy and Barb, uh, our educator, know than knowing that the clergy we hire, whether Rabbi Grossman or Rabbi Bowman, are requested to serve beyond their willingness to serve. This past Monday, I was doing a bar mitzvah that almost overlapped with the funeral that he did. So when I went to pay a shiva call to the family on Tuesday night, to the children of the deceased, the family said, unsolicited, Rabbi Grossman was wonderful. This family knew me, knew Cantor Kaplan, Rabbi Danziger, they even knew Rabbi Bowman. But that funeral, after two weddings that Adam did last weekend, was the family's first introduction to him, and they loved him. Last paragraph. Amy, Adam's wife, like my own wife, is no less involved and no more involved than any other active congregant. Instead of assuming a role as a Rebetzin or a rabbi's wife, Amy has done something greater, in case you didn't know. She has lent her expertise to our flagship Barbara K. Littman Early Learning Center, where Amy has not only served as co-president of the school, but her professional graphics work has renewed the communication of the school where daughter Zohara and the first family member born in Memphis, daughter Lila, attend school. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, Lila and Zohara, for being such wonderful daughters and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, first the Hebrew line, Adam tov v'heitev asita. Adam, you done good, and you did well. It's my pleasure to call forward an already much-loved rabbi of Temple who, after three years only, warrants his designation as associate rabbi. Adam, it's all yours.